Madass, madassmoney.com, and guess what guys? I made over half a million dollars day trading this month. That's right, crazy to say, right? I made enough for my day trading activity this month to go and buy a Lamborghini Aventador, brand new Lamborghini Aventador, straight cash. Right now, if I felt like it, I can totally go out there and do that right now, just from my day trading profits alone from this month. Don't believe me, haters? Here's a broker statement. All right, guys, here's the broker statement, June 1st to June 30th, you can see right there, those are the dates, and here are the profits, you can see right there, uh, you scroll down, you can see there are the $80,000 days, uh, trading ticker symbol check right there, okay? Scrolling down, a couple big days, and you can see my $100,000 day right there, 103,622, trading ticker symbol U1, as expected there on Tuesday, June the 16th. You see the video of that live trading, of course, as on my YouTube channel. Um, the big loss day right there, 150,000, nothing to hide. I did uh, take the biggest loss of my trading career right there. We're gonna talk about that in this video. Uh, another big day right there. Uh, a couple uh, losses as well, but I did recover the loss in a relatively short amount of time. Um, but uh, you can see overall there, total, right there right there five hundred thirty six thousand dollars net on the month five hundred thirty six thousand dollars net on the month a lot of commissions a lot of shares traded 10 million shares traded but uh, overall my best month ever right there over half a million dollars guys sick month so in this video I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Couple things from this epic record breaking month, my best trading month by far ever. A uh, couple things I did not cover in a previous video. If you guys have not seen the couple live trading videos of my two best days of all time, check it out in the upper right hand corner, the $80,000 day where I was trading ticker symbol CHK and the $100,000 day, six figure day where I traded ticker symbol U1. Check those out, they're really, really awesome. Epic live trading. Uh, footage that you guys can totally learn from epic action what a market we've been trading lately it's just been unbelievable non-stop but I'm going ahead and talk about the big loss I did take the biggest loss of my trading career uh, I'm going ahead and talk about that and a lot of you guys want me to discuss what exactly happened but despite the big loss I still end up on top in a big way so all that matters is that uh, it was a great month and on top of that I'm gonna show you guys a live trading example. Of course, what's a mad as money video without a live trading example? I'm gonna show you guys a live trading example that I just did yesterday on ticker symbol CARV, C-A-R-V. Panic pop short for $30,000 in a matter of minutes and then shorting another secondary residual pop for another $10,000 for a total of $40,000 shorting CARV, C-A-R-V a little bit over an hour so forty thousand dollars and a little bit over an hour not too bad not too bad so all that good stuff to come in this video so stick around and find out more Well, a lot of guys in the Mad As Money community posting record months, breaking personal records day after day. It's really amazing to see how incredible this market has been in terms of opportunities. I mean, everyone's at home and just burning their stimulus checks and the Robin Hood guys just uh, chasing everything that's moving. It's just unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. I hope uh, I hope it keeps on going, man, because uh, I could use a couple extra um five hundred thousand dollar months uh, i think i think we all could use a couple extra bucks in our pockets so let's uh let's keep it going uh first and foremost i'd like to address uh one thing that a lot of you guys like to point out is that why don't i make more youtube videos more frequently you know a lot of these other uh day trade youtuber channels they they make a lot of videos they, they release videos pretty frequently sometimes every day and the easy answer to that is obviously it takes a lot of time 
to make a YouTube video. Okay. For me, I'm a one man show. Uh, you got to plan out the video. You got to think about how to film it, you know, set up the lighting and, and do all that stuff. And then you got to record it and then you got to edit it. You got to produce it. You got to do all this stuff. Post-processing rendering takes forever. So the whole entire process takes like 10 hours. Okay. So as a person who's just doing it all by himself, it takes a lot of time, especially uh, after a full day of trading where I'm mentally spent. I got uh, very low energy left after, you know, I, I'm on the West Coast. I wake up at 6 a.m. Uh, trading a full day where I'm just really, really just burning myself out, trying to figure uh, out the market and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I really don't got that much energy left. And, and again, you know, I'm doing this all by myself. Some of these other guys that are releasing videos uh, every single day. I, I would imagine they probably have a full on team to help uh, with the video editing process or some sort of uh, help along the way to, to help them, you know, get these videos out more frequently. And uh, I'm doing this all by myself, guys. And I'm also doing this basically for free because I don't get that much money off of these YouTube videos at all. Um, which leads me to the next thing. I hope you guys understand that day trading is my number one source of income by far. Okay, you guys saw I made $536,000 this month day trading. Now, I do have side hustles. I do make money from my chat room, uh, madasmoney.com trading community. Of course, I make money off of that. I make money off of my affiliate marketing, but it's pale in comparisons to how much money I make day trading. You could put all that money together. I mean, you guys could probably... You know, run the numbers yourself and figure it out. There's no way I can make five hundred thousand dollars from those things. So you guys better believe that my focus and my priorities are going to be all of my day trading. If I'm taking a big loss, like a lot of you guys were uh, complaining, why didn't I make a video about the big loss, guys? If I'm losing my ass in the market, hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the red, the last thing I'm going to think of is to make a video that's going to make me like twenty bucks in YouTube ad revenue and uh, spend another ten hours of mental energy to make that video as opposed to spending that same 10 hours resting up my uh my my mindset and and resting up for the next day and studying what i did wrong so that way i could recover and indeed i did recover that loss pretty quickly i recovered it within a week you know but if i wasted uh that mental capital on things that didn't matter things that are lower in the priority chain who knows i who knows how long it would have been to uh, for me to take to make that loss back so i hope you guys understand that guys uh i do try my best to help you guys out with this content but in reality i'm doing it basically you know i'm volunteering uh, my time to do this stuff so uh, i hope you guys understand that and uh i hope you guys uh give me a thumbs up a like and a comment maybe if you guys show me uh a lot more support and when it comes to this uh, youtube channel i'll be making more videos more frequently for the time being uh you know it's on my own time Trading is always going to be my number one bread and butter. It pays the bills uh, by far. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, maybe the market uh, gives me some more opportunities to make videos, topics to make videos about. But for the time being, with the way the market's going, going it's just taking a lot of my energy. So hopefully you guys understand that. And uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and talk about the content of today's video so you guys saw the broker statement i had a pretty epic month uh but I, i'm gonna go ahead and address that loss now that i've had a couple weeks to you know make back the loss and on top of that just um think about how i should talk about it and uh show you guys uh what exactly happened it's a pretty easy mistake honestly i mean i was just uh, stuck in the moment uh but i do want to share and be fully transparent and show you guys yes i did take the biggest loss of my career uh but at the same time you know despite that uh, I still have my best best month ever, but you know we always have room to improve. If I didn't have that loss, I probably could have had like a even bigger best month ever, right? Could have had like a seven eight hundred thousand dollar month. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I did save the charts on this uh, loss. It was on U one ticker symbol U one. So this is the chart uh, right here. So this is exactly what happened. Okay, so I was short at the open. Uh, this is the this is after U one had tanked. Uh, I will show you guys the. Uh, uh, multi-day chart in a, in a second but this is the intraday chart on the day where i took the loss uh as you see i shorted the open covered it i was actually up on this and uh i kept shorting these pops because i figured that you know u1 had tanked from like 40 dollars, and there would be a lot of bag holders uh that would be you know adding them downwards sell pressure into the stock uh, i kept trying to short it got stopped out there shorted 
covered some, but then got stopped out again. And uh, you kept seeing me attempt to short this thing too many times, basically. I attempted to short this thing way too many times. I should have flipped to long around this $20 area, this line right there. Uh, this is the key inflection point. I'll show you guys why that is in a second on the multi-day chart. And then I finally decided to flip long eventually and I made back a good amount. So I actually lost, I was actually down like about a quarter million dollars trying to short this thing. Yeah, I know that's crazy, right? A quarter million dollars. But I, I made back a hundred thousand dollars going long. But in reality, had I just stopped shorting here at this line at twenty dollars, I probably will only have been down like I think like eighty, ninety thousand dollars, which is still a big number. But considering the fact that I made back a hundred thousand dollars going long and flipping biases late, I mean I probably would have ended up green on the day, as crazy as that sounds. So, you know, it's all about figuring out that inflection point and flipping biases before the loss gets out of control and, and not recoverable. Right, so I'm gonna show you guys the uh, multi-day chart so you guys can see why that 20 level is so important. Uh, right here, this is actually my platform, Dash Trader Pro, great platform, check them out. 14-day uh, free trial on madasmoney.com. Uh, but you can see right here, if you look at uh, this line right here, so these are the multi-days, this is the day where it squeezed, this is the day where I got stuck and took the loss, right? So this is the first day, stock ran from five to uh, 40, and it tanked all the way down to 10, right? Or uh, yeah, $10. So you're talking about a 75% drop in one day. So you kind of figure, okay, there's a lot of overhead resistance. It's going to be a short on pops. But you can see right here, this, this level is very key. So we're going to draw this line right here, okay? So this line right here, it's around $20, right? $20. That magic number we were just talking about in that other chart. So $20, why is it so important? Because this is basically... The consolidation level right here, all this volume traded uh, above this $20 area, it basically splits this chart in half, right? So once this stock reclaimed 20, all of these people now are, you know, they're, they're back to break even. Anyone that bought here, they're, they're actually feeling a lot better about themselves. And at the same time that anyone that was looking to short these pops, they're now stuck. As you can see, the volume picked up the moment $20 broke. You see right there, the volume candle right there, spike right there. On this particular candle so you can see that that $20 mark was the inflection point as it split this chart into two and once this reclaimed you know it was basically shorts that were down here they're like uh oh this is not looking right so the easy way to see this would be you know you got the people that are long over $20 and you got people that are look, looking to short the pops right at some point in time there's gonna be a an inflection point where there's gonna be more shorts stuck then long stuck, right? And there's gonna be more short bag holders and long bag holders, and that point was $20. And the reason why is because you see right there, it was basically the key line in the sand right there, the key level of support. You know, this crack led to the downward move, but then it reclaimed. Anytime you get a crack and a reclaim, uh, shorts are gonna be in a little bit of trouble. They're gonna be uh, kind of worried and headed for the exits. And, you know, truth be told, I was aware that there was a chat room with a very large following, which I will not name, that, uh, you know, had a hand in this squeeze, but I'm not going to make any excuses, right? I should have recognized this $20 mark and stopped out, uh, taking my loss, whatever it would have been, eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000, and then flipped long, and I would have been able to make the money back a lot sooner and probably would have ended up green on the day. So that's pretty much my U1 trade right there, and that's very simple, right? Just identifying that key inflection point that key level of support resistance to know exactly when to flip biases and then going back to my uh, intraday chart again you can see that right here should have definitely uh, stopped shorting over this $20 area I tried too many times you can see right there um, all those times were just compounding my losses out of control um, so that's pretty much my U1 loss guys and uh, hopefully you guys understood now now that I've had a couple of weeks to really uh, think about how to present this to you guys with a clear mind. This is my biggest loss of all time. But like I said, I recovered from it very quickly. Um, just uh, had a nice uh, nice night's sleep that, uh, that day after studying the charts. That's another thing, right? A lot of guys ask me, how do you recover from losses so quickly? Uh, well, first of all, it stems from confidence, right? I've been doing this for nine going on 10 years. I have full confidence in my abilities to recover losses, especially in a market where we have so many opportunities to make big money. So 
that's number one. I, I have enough self-belief in knowing that I can make it back, right? A lot of people have that problem where if they lose the money, they're not sure if they'll ever see it again. It's just a self-confidence issue, right? Um, and secondly, like I said, you know, there's enough opportunities in this market. Uh, I got enough rest. I studied the charts. I figured out what I did wrong. I fixed it and uh, rested up, woke up the next day, business as usual. And then within about a week or so, made the loss back. And now it's... Uh, it's a distant distant memory. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Full transparency, you won loss. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, carve trade where I made $40,000. Let's talk about some more positive stuff. All right, guys, so we're gonna pick it up here. This is actually yesterday's live trading footage. I recorded this one. I wanted to make it a separate video, but you know, you know just might as well just record one video. Like I said, YouTube videos take forever to record, so might as well just uh, make my job a lot easier here. Uh, 9.37, so seven minutes, going on eight minutes into the day. Uh, I am short blank on, on this uh, uh, at this moment, but uh, we're gonna focus on the carve trade. Um, so let's watch this carve trade right here. You see what happened with carve carve is actually a bag holder stock You see on this is the daily chart. It was pumped to 2297 faded all the way back down And I was actually kind of fearful. It was actually gonna pull a u1 right like what we just saw right the stock Dumping really hard and somehow coming back from the dead, right? Uh, so I was actually kind of fearful for that. So I was a little bit conservative in terms of waiting for the right opportunity to strike. Uh, so you can see again, uh, the stock ran from whatever single digits to 2297, faded all the way back down to single digits. And today it gapped up huge, ran up to $17 pre market. And the same, you know, the same chat room who had a hand in the squeeze and, and U1 had a hand in this uh, car of pre market action. So again, I'm not going to name names. You guys can figure it out for yourselves. Uh, but. In any case, I was kind of fearful I was going to get a repeat of the U1 situation. I didn't feel like losing another, you know, six figures. Uh, so I was, again, conservative. Uh, looking at what happened here, you can see that the stock ran from 7 to 17. Kind of double topped there, 17 right before the market opened. Then it tanked with a big red candle at the open. Cracking this 15 support level pre-market. So at this point, I'm looking for a pop short against 15. Uh, pop short against 15 right there. This is a prior res uh, support acting as new resistance. And let's see what happens here. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So let's keep an eye on this. It's looking pretty lifeless at the moment. I'm looking for a pop again. And, and just pause real quick. Uh, those of you guys that are new to my videos, this is the Lontage or Level 2 or the Market Depth. This is what I'm looking at 90% of the time. The charts are only here for reference. So keep getting these comments, guys. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? I'm looking at the Level 2, guys. These are the bids and these are the asks buyers sellers all right so looking at the level two we're going to get a pop right here back over 13 dollars i take a starter there at 13 to one on this little pop there's a little micro support acting as resistance right there so we're seeing it bounce off of that level real quick uh bounce against it rather so quick starter there at 13 21 10 000 shares i'm already up an instant unrealized forty five hundred dollars and one thing you guys notice if you guys uh are not familiar with the way i trade i short pops and i buy dips so what this does for me is that when i'm instantly up uh when i when i get in on the trade i'm instantly almost up so a lot of people they like to chase moves or whatever i'm very much against that because you know when you chase and the thing goes against you you're you're staring at a big red unrealized number right but if you guys notice a lot of my videos when i'm in i'm like top ticking these pops or bottom ticking these dip buys washout longs panic pop shorts so this is a panic pop short example uh i'm often even with big size what might appear to be a lot of risk right Ten thousand shares on a 13 dollar stock um i'm up on the trade like right away so i'm you know, when you're staring at a nice green number, unrealized green number, you're able to subconsciously manage the trade a lot better um, emotionally. You're a lot. To, uh, you're able to handle and manage the trade a lot more easily when you're just you know you're in the money, right? So, just want to make a comment right there regarding that. So, let's see what happens here. Um, I'm also concurring on Blink, like I said. But we're focusing on Carve right now. I'm up about six thousand dollars in this trade. We see that's faded down to twelve. So again, right now, what I'm looking for is any sort of pop. You know, ideally in a perfect world, it pops to $15. But you can see how weak it's looking right now. There's like no bounce so far, no significant bounce given the magnitude of the drop. It's dropped from 17 pre-market down to 12. And you're not really getting much, you know, not much of a response from this stock. It's showing a lot of weakness. It's popping back to 13 there. So let's see, uh, if it pops to 14, 14.20 is VWAP, but it's struggling to stay over $13. 
Uh, you can see right there, bids over 13 for a second, but they immediately drop off, go back below 13. So this stock's still struggling. It's finding like, some support there at 12, uh, but nonetheless, it's still relatively weak given the magnitude of the drop. Now it's back over 13 again. Again, I'm looking to see if this thing can pop to $15 ideally. I went ahead and, and hit 13 again based on that weakness. You see multiple wicks right there on the on this intraday three minute chart against this little soft level here at 13.2. So this stock's showing a lot of weakness. When you see a stock drop this much and it can't even bounce like a couple points, you're talking about a five point drop, it can't even bounce like two points, three points, then you better believe there's probably a lot of sellers, right? A lot of selling pressure. So I went ahead and doubled up my position. Now I'm in 20,000 shares. I'm saving, uh, you know, a couple ads in case it goes to 15. So then my average would be around 14 something. But right now, you know, it's just showing so much weakness. The volume is dropping off. Demand might be dropping off. And uh, we'll see what happens here off of this 13.2 level. All right. So right now the stock's still dancing around this 13 area. Um, again, I'm still in 13.10 average. And I still got, you know, a lot of room to add. So let's watch what happens here. I'm looking for basically a 12 flush on these. And then obviously I'll be in the driver's seat because I'll be up over uh, $20,000 if it flushes $12. Got beer there at 12.40, he gets whacked out. Look at that, instantly down. Look at that, covering some into this wash. So there's my 12 flush. Next level of support I'm looking at is 11.30. And uh, look at that, I'm unrealized. 15,000 realized 7,000 it means I'm up $23,000 on this trade in what was that like seven minutes so that's pretty crazy off of this carve short there against this 13.2 uh, level recognizing on a tape that the stock was struggling to even get anywhere uh, you know over that 13.2 over the 14 VUI 15 it was just looking pretty lifeless uh, I covered some there. Still got 14,000 shares. You see me cover another uh, couple shares there to realize $12,000, guys. $12,000. It looks like it's about to downside halt there, 1152. So now I basically covered half here on this 1150 uh, wash, if you will. 12 wash to 1150. Realized already $12,000. Trying to cover another 5,000 there, 11.6. So let's see if I get that. Cover there a couple more. So I realized $19,200, guys, in about what, eight minutes? Pretty crazy. So I got one fourth of my position left. Right now, I realized $19,000 on the day. Next support level, 11.3. As again, I'm recognizing that. So it's kind of bouncing a little bit off of that 11.3 level. But again, I'm very locked in. Um, a good portion of my position there. I only got one fourth left. Still unrealized, up another five thousand, six thousand dollars. At this point, you know, given the cushion that I have, I can kind of let this ride a little bit, if you will. You see, I also covered half a blink there, I think. But yeah, right now, just watching. It's also really tough to trade two stocks at the same time, especially when you're trading size. But uh, you can see their weakness back down to 11. Unbelievable. Down up another $10,000, basically. Looking for a 10 flush on the rest. Look at that. I'm all out of it. $30,000, guys. $30,000. Shorting this 13.2 resistance. Panic pop short. Uh, down to 10. Wow. Incredible. And what is that? 12 minutes? 12 minutes, guys. 12 minutes, $30,000. That's unbelievable. And the stock, just a total dumb fest, man. Whoever was uh, in control of this stock, they cashed out big, man. They cashed out big time. Uh, these guys took everyone's money, hijacked everyone's uh, stimulus checks, and hightailed it to the Bahamas, man. But yeah, lock it in there. $30,000 in what was like 12 minutes. Excellent trade. Panic pop short example. Uh, this trade took place on the 30th, which was yesterday. The last day of June. Amazing action. It's going a little bit lower. And we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward to the next trade I took. Let's see, where was it?
All right, guys. So right now, the stock's kind of found a little bit of support here on this 10-hole, nice little hole psychological number. I'm waiting for a bounce to get short again, basically. So we'll see what happens here. I'm looking for a pop, maybe back toward that 11 area. Again, 11.35 is this level right here. So we'll look for a pop around that level since it's so weak. So again, I'm looking to short pops. I don't slam lows. I don't chase or anything like that. So always shorting the pops. So that way, I'll be nicely up on the trade instantly, unrealized. There you go. See me short there on this little 11 pop right to that line right there. Nothing fancy. No fancy crazy indicators. Just uh, basic support and resistance, guys. Popped at 11 threes. Got short there 11 11. 4,950 shares. Didn't fill the ring 50 shares, whatever. And you can see right there, again, instantly up on the trade. I'm going to look to size up on any further pops, you know, leaving some room in case it goes to 12, uh, 13 twos for whatever reason. Yeah, look at that. Up on the trade again, another... Another three thousand dollars. Pretty epic action, guys. This market has been just so generous. It's been truly amazing, guys. I, I can't. I've met a loss of words to describe how epic this market has been, in terms of opportunities. I've been saying that so many times, man. Seriously, and I really mean it. So again, the stock right now is trying to find some support here in the tens. You see a couple couple uh, wicked candles here to the upside um again i'm looking for an ad you know i want to i want to add on pops to 11s 12s 13s where these lines are drawn right here because the stock overall is pretty weak But you got to respect the fact that it is, for the time being, finding some buyers here, holding it up in the tens. It's trying to pop over 11 again. But overall, like I said, now you got today's bag holders stuck. You got bag holders from a multi-day perspective. You got bag holders from an intraday perspective. The idea is that there's just too many, too many things going against this stock to keep it, you know, going up. So there's my remaining 50 shares at fill. Let's see if I get another ad here. Try to add, looks like another couple shares here, 11.4. I do get those. No, I didn't get those. There, there I, get, I do get those there. So I got 7,500 shares now. 11.24 average. Now, looking good again for another fail here at 11. You can see how the stock, you know, every time it tries to go up, it tries to go up, but it gets, you know, swarmed pretty quickly. Probably the bag holders are selling into this. Again, you got 60 million shares trade on a day where it ran at 22. So there's a lot of people probably stuck that are using these pops as an opportunity to get out. On top of, obviously, whoever is behind this stock, they're probably, you know, dumping their shares so they can cash out on everyone. Um, but you can see that, this stock has a lot easier time going down than up. You know, every time it goes up, it gets slammed back down. So I'm still for sure short bias on the stock despite this 10, seemingly 10 support hold. You know, lots of room to add. You know, I'm only in 7,500 shares. Lots of room to really see if I can get a nice pop to 12 or 13 and get another add. But let's just see what happens here. You see the stock now losing that 1050 area. There was a brief 1050 bid. Already up another six thousand dollars on this position here. Seventy five hundred shares. So at this point, you know, we're looking at this ten support area. If it goes below ten, you're looking at a flush down to the nines. Um I mean at this point you got a couple more you know, sellers, I mean, buyers that probably got caught chasing this 11, thinking it was going to bounce. So just adding more fuel to the fire to the downside. So let's see if 10s hold up.
There we go. Ten's hanging on for dear life, it looks like. Couple of last ditch bids here trying to save tens. You still see the ass. Like just getting aggressive here. I mean it's barely bouncing here off a of ten. There's a bidder there at ten. You can kind of see it's just hanging on for dear life at this point. Again, I'm up, you know, seven, eight thousand dollars on this position. Seventy five hundred shares. Didn't get the full size that I wanted, but still. Looking pretty good here still with a decent enough position to make some money. Watch 10s here. Look at this. It's getting really close. That bit at 10. It's trying really hard, man. It's trying so hard. But the ask is just down ticking there. And you just look at this tape. You can see it's just a matter of time where it just gives way and just free falls. We have ass stack there at 1025. There we go. See a couple prints going through that 10 there. The 10 bids trying, man. Still trying so hard. Barely bouncing off a of 10. It's, I mean, this is a $10 stock. It's barely able to bounce 20 cents. 10, 25 sellers are back. Stack there. A $10 stock should not be struggling to bounce 20, 30 cents. Especially after a, you know, seven point drop. And that pretty much tells the story right there. So I'm just holding on to this. It's just a matter of time that this 10... Crack is going to give way. I mean, this lack of a bounce. Very telling. We got, uh, got 1020s. A couple sellers still just not letting it run, even though there's bids here in the low 10s. Let's and here it goes. 10s getting whacked. There it goes. Boom. So right now we see the 10 flush. You see me put my order there for 985. Freeze frame it for you guys. So you can see right there. See if I get the fill. Filled some. Got a partial. Just in case it's a 10 fake. So I locked in some there. Let's see if 10 holds up here. And this is a fake. If not, it should go back down to see if 10 holds up. Nope. So it does not hold up. I'm putting my order at 990 this time. Covering basically only a couple thousand shares left. And I'm all out of it, guys. $40,000 in less than one hour. $40,000 locking in there on carbs, shorting the pops. You saw it here, right here. Live trading example on the Mad As Money YouTube channel. Showing the pops there. Initially showing the pop there at 13.2, riding it down. Showing the residual pops there at 11, riding it down there to the nines. $40,000 locking it in there on carve in just less than an hour's worth of work. This market, guys, this market, unbelievable opportunities, like I said. So this is, uh, concludes another live trading example, another live trading epic video here at madasmoney.com. Again, if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, smash that like button, leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys banked off of Carve yesterday or what else you guys traded Blink. Uh, if you guys are curious what happened today, I ended up making $55,000 on the day. That's what I f ended up finishing uh, with on the day, six on uh, 6 uh, thirty. June 30th, 2020. Uh, I post all my profits every single day on my Twitter as well as on my website, madasmoney.com. You scroll to the bottom, you'll see uh, my daily PL posts. But uh, other than that, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed another live big money trade. No, none of that hindsight stuff, none of that, uh, you know, none of that uh, small size piker BS. This is some real live trades. This is a live trade that I took inside Mad As Money. So if you guys want to check out madasmoney.com, feel free to do so. Uh, we're actually having our 4th of July sale, which should be up 
this weekend. So you heard it here first. It's not even not even up on the website yet. But uh, if you guys check the website, by the time this video is probably posted, it's probably going to be live. Check it out, guys. Fourth of July sale. If you guys want to get in on the Five Figure Club festivities, now's the time to do it. So that said, guys, your boy Matt Az signing out.